Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the video, and today we're going to be doing a review for the brand new T-Motor F60 version 2 Pro. So, just like the um, F40 V2 Pro, which I recently did a bench review of quite a while ago, I've been enjoying them on my freestyle quad. Now they came out with the F60 version, which shares a very similar design, except in the 2207 size stator, aimed at more towards racing. So, let's just get this guy open. Come in the same little boxes with foam on them, a little bit over the top, but it's always nice. You get a few little stickers this time, a little uh, QC Pass certification thing there, so that's nice. Have a little silica gel bead um, thing to keep everything nice and dry in there. And then we have our little bag with the screws for the motor. It does only come with four screws, no fifth one, so that's kind of disappointing. However, they are seven millimeter screws, which is really nice because it gives you a little bit extra purchase into the motor um, versus six millimeter screws. And then we do also have our lock nut right there. You can see a little adamantium gray silver one, as well as a spare, hopefully you can see a spare set screw for the bottom, as well as the little ring that goes on there in case you lose the ones already in the motor, which is really nice. And then we have the motor right here, pulling it out. And right away I can tell that they definitely did listen to everyone's suggestions from the F40 version 2, which had 100 millimeter wires. They now extended these guys out to 150 millimeters, so you're not gonna need to extend these pretty much no matter what build you're using, so that's really nice. Just take a look at the motor here, you can see. Of course, very, very similar, pretty much identical design to the F40 version 2 minus the stator um, changes of course so this is a 2306 and this guy's a 2207 so hopefully you can see the one on the right just a little bit wider but then if we hold them up next to each other you can see the F60 is taller right there so of course just like the F40 we have our hollow titanium shaft that goes five millimeters here and four millimeters out the bottom we do have the sort of grating on the top here to help um, keep your prop from slipping at the very lightweight bell design and we do have the 16 by 16 naked bottom um, design on the um, base of the motor here however it is two millimeters I wish they did go to three but that's not a huge issue and then we do have the 1.5 millimeter set screw so let's see if this comes out without any heat and yes it does hate it when set screws don't actually do their purpose and come right out but this guy, just like the F40, comes out nice. We do have some Loctite on there, but it did not need to be heated. So, it's pretty nice. And we can just pull the um, bell off to take a look inside. Okay, so that guy just pulls right off there. So, if we take a look at the um, bell itself, you can see the magnets there. They're actually very, very thick and placed throughout. You can see they pretty much take up the entire space of the motoring here. If we compare, this is a Brother Hobby R3 2207 motor. If you just compare the magnets, you can see there's a lot more empty space with the Brother Hobby one, so that's going to add some decent weight here, as well as this is a 3 millimeter aluminum shaft there. This is a 4 millimeter titanium shaft at the bottom, so this should be quite a bit stronger. And if we take a look at the stator, just like the F40, we have the multi-strand windings, which are a silver core with a high temp coating. Very cool there, and let's actually just measure this guy. So it's 22 millimeters across, which is expected. Interestingly though, this is actually 2207.5. I'm getting 7.5 when I measure um, the height of this stator. If we compare it, here's a Brother Hobby 2207 R3. If we hold them up next to each other, the actual stators, if I get them lined up, hopefully you can see that the uh, T-Motor is actually half a millimeter taller. So that's quite interesting because they said this was a 2207, but in all my measurements and comparing it to other 2207s, this is definitely a 2207.5 which is going to make sense for all the extra weight that I feel. It just feels like a pretty decently heavy motor in the hand, as well as if you just hold it up to other 2207s, it just looks a little bit bigger, almost like a 2208, so that's kind of interesting there. So let's just put this guy back together, right there. And if you can, you want to try to not let the uh, bell slam together like that, in case your bearings get damaged. But it just kind of got away from me there, but then we can put the um, set screw back in. To do this, you just want to pretty much go all the way up tight, um, pretty tight till you just it starts to encounter quite a bit of resistance. If you spin it by hand now, it should be a little bit hard to spin, harder to spin than normal. So you just want to make sure you go all the way tight and then just back out like a quarter turn, so that it's um, free but it's still tight in there, and the Loctite should do fine. 
So that's all good. So let's get a quick weight for this motor. So this is the motor without the lock nut and with the full 150 millimeters of wire. So that does weigh 35.35 grams. So that's actually pretty heavy. If we weigh a Brother Hobby, um, this is once again the R3 2207 with 160 millimeters of wire. This guy comes out to be 33 grams, so it actually is 2 grams lighter. However, this is, once again, a 227.5 motor, so that's going to add um, a lot more windings in there, a lot more material, as well as I showed you the overall space filled by the magnets on the T-motor is quite a bit more. There's a lot of more wasted space on the Brother Hobby motor, so that's also contributing there. So yeah, that was just a quick overview and intro of the new F60 version 2 Pro. So let me get them installed onto a quad I'm using one of my ghosts here. And this quad does have the Brother Hobby R3 2207 2550 kV motors on there. So it'll be a really nice comparison to swap them out with these new guys and see how they perform since they are very similar spec motors. And I'm already very used to flying these for about six months now. So let's get them swapped on and we'll see how they perform. All right, here we are outside for a line of sight flight with the T-Motor F62 Pro version, 2500 kV motors. So this is the exact same setup as before. I'm running the Gemfan 5055 Hulky, the Mode 2 Ghost Frame, Foxier Micro Arrow, Hyperlay F4 Flight Controller, Speedix IS30 Amp Form 1, FreeSky X4R SB Receiver, TBS HV Unify Race, Emacs Pagoda, and a tattoo R-Line 1300 4S 95C on the bottom there. So this is the same setup I've been flying for a long time now, so it'll definitely be a good comparison since pretty much only the motors have changed here with the swap. Let's get this guy plugged up. I'm ready to go. Just set that in there. It is very cold out, so hopefully everything goes well. And I put the uh, yellow and blue on, so hopefully it shows up better on camera. I know it's pretty dark out right now. Alright. Flying pretty well so far. Just do a full speed pass while we have the battery over from this direction. It's against the wind. That's with the wind, probably about just about 100 miles an hour. And these are 2500 kV motors, so they're actually a little bit lower um, than the other ones, and especially lower than if you're running a 26 or 2700 kV. So they're going to have a lower top end there, but hopefully they will be more efficient, which is good for racing because you don't really need that top end. They just seem, uh, I don't know, they don't really seem that responsive actually. I know these are pretty high load prop, but it just seems like they're taking a little bit of time to get up to speed. Here's some throttle punches and chops. Just seems like they're not performing that well. Although it is like 15 degrees out, so the battery is probably getting hit pretty hard from the cold. They definitely like the mid, the mid end of their throttle though. All right, my fingers are too cold. Let's bring this guy back in. So that was the line of sight and they are completely cold there. So let's switch over and do some FPV. All right, here we have the T-Motor F60 Pro version two for some FPV. Same exact setup as before, except now I have a 1550 R-Line on. And because um, the air gap on these guys is a little bit uh, bigger than some other similar motors and for the line of sight they didn't seem all that responsive um, I'm actually going to see how long of a flight time I get on them because they're probably a little bit more efficient 
So I'm going to run the battery pretty much all the way down. And while the line of sight didn't seem too responsive, that might just be from the extra weight because they did add about 15, 10 to 15 grams to the quad. So it's almost a 300 gram quad now. And I'm used to like 250 because in the FPV here, they certainly are flying very nice with definitely respectable power. Tune definitely needs a um, change though. This came from uh, another 2017, but with HQ props, not the Gen fan, so the tune needs adjusted, but they certainly do have the power. Oh yeah, they hook that corner nice. Full throttle there. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Full speed. Yeah, they definitely seem to have the most uh, most of their power in the mid band range. The bottom and top end don't seem particularly Ten, crazy. Nine, eight, even with the gem seven, fan props. Six, five, four, three, two. One, Let's check our battery. Zero. Still at 14.8 volts, so we're fine there. That was two minutes so far. I haven't flown in a while, having to get used to things again. So now we're sitting about 14.5, so battery's getting down there. But we're still good, definitely, to keep flying here. Alright, now we're just hitting, now we're sagging down 13, 12 volts. So yeah, that's actually pretty decent flight time. I was, have to check, but I think that was over three minutes. Right, let me check real quick. Yep, that was three and a half minutes. So definitely, definitely, if you can see the time there, was some more efficiency than I'm experiencing with other 2207s. Alright, so here we are back inside to finish up the review of the T-Motor F60 version 2 Pro Edition, the 2207.5 2500 kV motor right there. So, like I was explaining in the um, flying of this guy, the motors, they did perform well, they just, I don't know, they just didn't seem to have too much pop to me, especially in the low end response, hopefully you could tell, it just seemed a little bit sluggish to get going, and I'm not exactly sure why, because they are a 2207.5 motor, um, they do have, as I explained in the beginning, they have some very wide magnets, it's com basically the bell is completely full of magnets here, the air gap is a little bit larger than some other motors you can't really tell too much here but it's honestly not giant so i'm not really sure why that was happening maybe there's something going on with my esc on here but i did swap from the brother hobby motors um, on here on this same exact quad and it just feels less powerful now and i did also fly it back to back with this other ghost which is completely identical to this one minus the motors so once again we have the brother hobby versus the t-motor here and this one just felt a lot more powerful in the low end and just a lot more responsive and snappy and then also flying it on my other ghost with the prototype mode 2 motors which are a 2207 um, size motor it just feels even more responsive again so in terms of the overall low end and the sort of just peppiness of the motor i was actually kind of a little bit let down there and i'm not sure why but i did talk to envy astro and he has been flying these exact motors well he has the 2700 kv editions i think and these um, 2500s and he really really likes them so i'm not sure what's going on maybe the esc on here is going out and that's why but 
in my experience, I wasn't that overall impressed with the power. I was just maybe I was overestimating it and just expecting this to be absolutely insane on power because it actually was pretty decently efficient. Um, running this setup with the Hulkies here, I was able to pull about three minutes of hard flying on a 1500, 1550, and on a 1300, I was able to get about two and a half, maybe just a little bit more um, minutes of pretty hard flying there. So they definitely were a little bit more efficient. Then um, these guys, these 2207, 2600 kV motors. So perhaps the um, stated kV on these is actually a little bit low. Maybe they're closer to a 2400 kV motor. And these brother hobbies are closer to a 2650 kV motor, something like that. So it might be worth um, trying out the 2700 kV editions of these. And then maybe going to a lighter load prop like the HQ5050, which I've done here. Um, which will bring up the overall response of it with a higher KV and then a lighter load prop. So yeah, that's going to bring us to the end of the review there. Once again, not entirely sure and decided on these motors, whether I like them or not, but they definitely did perform pretty well. Um, I definitely do like the F40 version 2 um, 2400 KV for a medium heavy freestyle build. These things just absolutely awesome, loving them. So there'll be links down below to the F60 V2. If you're interested, they're about $27, so they definitely are a premium motor, but they do bring a lot of premium features to the table, so that's something that you have to decide on. So please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.